When I met the head of examinations in India, and then I met the uh, examination board member for Zimbabwe, and I met an invigilator in South Africa. I mean, globally, I am because I'm promoting resilient learning everywhere. Globally, I'm meeting the key leaders in education. And right now, we're doing this interview in Australia, having this conversation in Australia where you are practicing as a doctor. I hear one thread coming from all of them, and that is they're saying that school is actually not preparing a student to face life thereafter. It's as if what they learn in school is only good for school. And when you did a, you gave a speech at the school, I forgot the name of the school, where Mrs. Fick was. Mm. Remember your yes, school yes. teacher? She asked you to come in and uh, give and a speech. And we spoke about amphibious learning. Yeah. So there, when you were talking to the students there, I was there with my camera. And you mentioned that resilient learning is amphibious learning. I was very excited because firstly, amphibious, the word sounds nice, right? But can you tell us what you mean by amphibious learning? Just for the students who are listening or the parents or the teachers, what you mean by resilient learning is amphibious learning? Because this is a, a critical differentiator yeah. between most cr uh, coaching programs out there. Mm -hmm. Please tell us. Well, firstly, I like the word amphibious, right? Amphibious means that you, you can thrive in more than one environment, right? And I think that's what resilient learning is building students and preparing students for. Because we're not just preparing students for high school or for grade 10. And after that, we're like, good job, that's it. You use these principles and you did a good job. We're preparing, we're changing their mindset and we are preparing them for themselves and for the world that they're going to enter. And that includes grade 10, that includes, includes grade 11, it includes matric, and it includes university, and it includes life after university. So Leanne, the way you're explaining it is so beautiful mm -hmm. that the principles of resilient learning, while you learn it in school, it's not just for, for school. school, but for the students who are listening, Leandra, you know, sometimes we get people who are proposing some theories. Can you give us one example of resilient learning, one principle that you used in, in high school, in university, and now as a practicing doctor, can you just to, just to give some evidence mm -hmm. that indeed this is a reality? Mm -hmm. We're not just saying, ooh, resilient learning, you can use it out of school. Mm -hmm. I mean, there must be some truth to it. Mm -hmm. So can you think of anything, Leanne? That's a bit of a difficult question, but let me try to think of an example that I used throughout school and university. Uh, you know, you don't think about exactly what you've used, even though you are using different techniques. I think that when I was in school, I learned from my father and from my teachers and my mother that when I was faced with a problem that I didn't understand or I was struggling to get this question right, I had to realize that sometimes the issue is not just, I don't know how to do this question. It might be that I don't understand this at all, mm, mm, right? Mm. So instead of focusing all my energy in, where am I missing this in the question? I might have to go back a few pages in my textbook or in my learning and remind myself what's actually happening in this question over here. And then I think when I went into university, I realized, oh my gosh, I don't understand how to do this question. What was that again? And I had to broaden my scope a little bit, familiarize myself about what I'm doing in the first place, what I'm learning, and then go back into the question. And then I think at work, sometimes I'm faced with an issue and I'm a bit confused. I don't really know what's happening to this patient or what to even do about it. And then I need to take a step back again, you know, broaden my scope, find out what are the issues at play, okay? How are they all affecting this question that I'm trying to mm, get to? Mm. And then how am I gonna use all of this knowledge that I just reminded myself of, even if I knew about it before, I just reminded myself of all of that again. And then the question becomes a little bit clearer. 
and you can function at your best even when you are working. Mm-hmm. I, I like the idea that resilient learning is amphibious learning and you clearly showed mm-hmm. us that the ability we, the ability to take a step back, have a broader view of the problem at hand, whether it's a question mm-hmm. of, in your case, handling a patient problem, having a broader view and realizing, like in maths, you know, you move from the known to the unknown. Mm. So you, you see what you have learned so far, how can you apply it? Mm. Is there something you need to relearn or unlearn or learn or learn something totally new yes. in order to solve this problem so that skill yep. is what you learn through resilient learning yes which you can apply in any grade in school for any question yes. any subject, subject yes beyond school mm-hmm. in university mm-hmm. and beyond university mm-hmm. into the work environment mm-hmm. so that is amphibious learning yes. I'm, I'm saying it correctly right i know i never write it but i like <laughs> I like to say I'm part of it, but that is amphibious learning. And Lee, I have to tell you that as a father, as a parent, this is one of our great concerns also. We want our children not just to excel academically. We want them to excel at life, Mm -hmm. right? We don't want our students to get good grades and don't know how to handle life. We want them to excel at life itself. And I think that resilient learning um, equips students with this mindset, but also equips the parents and the teachers and the teachers with the skills to help grow that mindset. And I think that's why resilient learning is so good because we're not just focusing on the student; we're giving the people around the student things to equip the student. So we are equipping the equippers. Yes. <laughs> right. So I like the idea that resilient learning is amphibious learning. So there you have it. Resilient learning is amphibious learning. When you go through the resilient learning program, you are not just learning principles on how to excel academically. You are learning principles that when it becomes part and parcel of who you are, helps you to excel in school, out of school, beyond school, through university and in work, at work as well, as in the case of Leandra. So, Leandra, thank you for explaining to us what resilient learning is all about in terms of amphibious learning. And I like to end by saying that resilient learning is amphibious amphibious learning. learning.